Hi, everyone. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited about this. I feel like I say that every time, but I'm really, really excited about today because not only is this story really inspiring, but in addition, I'm a huge fan of this person and the work that they do. So um, I'm really, really excited to share this with you. If you are here tuning in, can you let me know in the comments if you can hear me and see me okay, just to make sure that all the audio and the visual um, is working great before we do bring in our very special guest. Um, also, let me know where you're tuning in from and what you're hoping to get out of today. And in addition to that, let's be sure to give this a like so more people can see it in the algorithm or give it a love as some of you are. Um, and be sure to share it out with more people so that we can reach more people with this really, really incredible transformational story. So I'm going to be speaking to Chelsea Lang today. And I'm so excited about this because so often we think that the only way to build a business, particularly online, is to teach people how to make money. And that is so not true. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Anki. Hi. So happy you guys are here. So if you're tuning in, uh, be sure to let us know where you're tuning in from. And also, if you can hear us and see us, okay. Thanks, Nicole. Nicole from my team is here. Um, I'm an artist too, and so looking forward to hearing Chelsea's story. We're so excited to share it. So the thing is, with the Authority Accelerator program, we support people in creating programs and businesses um, around online courses that are for everything and everyone. We have accountants, we have professional dancers, we have relationship therapists, we have every, we have boat builders, we have everything under the sun, veterinarians. It is not about teaching people how to make money. And that is not the only way to build a successful online course business. And Chelsea is such a solid reminder of that and truly proof of that. So really excited to share this with you. I'm going to dive deeper into Chelsea's story. Chelsea was working in corporate for seven years prior to actually getting started on her career as an artist full-time. And now she has scaled her business to get this $30,000 a month. And she's been able to do that consistently. And I'm so happy for her. Um, so hello, everyone. We have people tuning in from Norway, from Toronto, from Berlin, from California. Um, hi, Tim in San Diego. Hi, Robin from Maryland, AA member and also an artist. So happy you're here. Uh, Miracle Teddy from Zambia. This is incredible. Okay, so we are going to get started. Like I said, please give this a like. Please give it a share um, so that we can reach even more people with this incredible story. Okay. So without further ado, let's bring Chelsea in and unmute her. Hi. Hi Sunny. You? I'm doing so great. I'm so honored to be here. We're so happy to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, I said this before when we met in the um, broadcast room, but I was like, I mean, you look flawless. The background looks flawless. <laughs> <laughs> it's very on brand for you. I feel like you really like made this your own and it, it just looks stunning. Everything looks thank stunning. You. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for putting that effort into it. Um, and I'm so excited to dive into this with you. So let's start right from the beginning. First and foremost, how did you get into oil painting to begin <laughs> with? Like, where did the start for you? Okay. So I've, I've been a painter all my life my I literally in this room I have an oil painting my grandmother made with me when I was three I, I think she really made it and she let me like make a few brush strokes but then she said look at her she, she's a genius she made this painting but um I've just always really really been drawn to art um but I've also always like done well in school and my whole family no one is a full-time artist I don't have creative people with creative careers in the family so they were like you're smart, you're going to go to college, you're going to get a really nice corporate job, and that's going to fund your art dreams. And, um, and I love school, I love all kinds of classes, got through college, got my first job out of college, and then realized, oh, no, I've, this is not what I was supposed to be doing. Um, and for that whole time, um, for that seven years that I was in that corporate job, I was like, all right, I need to make a change. But I've never I've never thought about this as a career. I don't know how to go about this. I haven't been planning for it. Um, and honestly, that that really changed when I found YouTube for bosses. And then I think about six months later, joined Authority Accelerator. Um, and I'm just, I'm so, so thankful for this program because without it, I, 
I think I'd still be working my tail off and figuring out how to make it work, but there is no way I would be thriving the way I am today. So thank you. Oh my gosh. It's my pleasure. And it's been such a treat to watch your journey. I mean, really, really incredible to see what you've been able to achieve in the last year. And I wanted to share just a few little highlights um, as we dig in. So in the last year, first and foremost, um, Chelsea launched her program um, and it was it generated $11,000 in the first month of launching it. And this was your first course ever, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. was the most money you'd ever made in a month? Yes. Amazing. 100%. Yeah. Um, so that was in July of 2020. You've since then used the program and turned your business evergreen. So you're bringing in consistent revenue month over month and it's automated and working in the back end, which is really great. So you're doing about $30,000 a month now, which is so exciting. Um, and you've gone from 4,000 to 40,000 YouTube subscribers in yeah. a matter of a very short period of time. Yep. Yep. It was 4,000 in July. I think as of this morning, I think I'm at 42,000 or about to cross over that today. Amazing. Yeah. Unreal. And your channel is the coolest thing ever. So I'm going to share it in a bit and hope that everybody subscribes. Um, and you took a two week vacation and still brought in $20,000 last month with yep. your course. Is that correct? Yes, that is. Oh my it- gosh. It was amazing. I'm so grateful for that. I mean, how how lucky are we to have businesses where we can thrive, whether we are busting butt in the office or on vacation? Absolutely. Yes, we love that. And we were talking about the location independence prior to this and just like how important that is for your lifestyle and how you want to live your life. And I just think that's so amazing that you're now running this business, doing what you love. You've completely shifted your life um, and you're able to be location independent as you do it. So um, if you're just tuning in right now, this is Chelsea Lang. She is a client in the Authority Accelerator program, and she is an incredible artist. Like I said, I'm going to share your YouTube channel shortly. Um, but you've taken your knowledge and expertise around art, and you've been able to translate it into a highly scalable online course using the Authority Accelerator as the roadmap to get you there. So um, going from that struggling artist narrative to six figures, which is really, really incredible. And you teach oil painting online, which is just... It's so, you couldn't get more niche than that. Um, So if you are just running, I'm going to drop the link if you're interested at all in the Authority Accelerator. Um, I'm going to drop the link right now for you to apply and we can pin that to the top so you can see where to apply. But it's just sunnylandardeasy.com slash apply. Okay, let's get into the good stuff. So how much did you buy into, you spoke to it a little bit, but how much did you buy into the starving artist narrative and believing that it wasn't possible to make a living? Yeah, I bought into that for a really long time. Um, I think probably the first 20 years of my life and then maybe a good chunk of the seven years that followed when I was trying to figure out how to make this work. Um, I spent a lot of time spinning my wheels, trying to find like safer routes for an artist, like finding out if there were any corporate jobs that needed artists, um, trying to make something work as an illustrator or being like an in-house designer for um, entertainment companies. And then finally, I realized like this was where my passion was. This is where my skills truly were. And I needed to just accept that if I was really passionate about this, the value is going to follow. And that's where Mm -hmm. I could make the biggest impact. Um, And and your course really helped me put that together as well. A lot of the exercises we do at the beginning of the Authority Accelerator. I think that if I had tried to teach or coach before this, I would have thought of myself as just an oil painting teacher, but the things that you have us do, the exercises you have us do made me realize that my strengths are in really seeing people and understanding the psychology of a creative career. Um, And so I get to position myself now, not as a dime a dozen (laughs) oil painting coach, um, but somebody who can really understand the mindset blocks that get in the way of this to help you break through and reach your goals with your painting practice. Which is really, I'm so glad you mentioned that because it is a big differentiating factor in our approach and how we work with clients. And it's something I'm really proud of is that there's really like the old way of finding a niche, which is going broad and finding the opportunity. So if you were to go about it that way, you'd be like, I'm an art teacher online, just like so many other people are. But part of the process is really, and I've mentioned this a lot, but it's your own hero's story and the things that you've been through that are unique to you and using that to not just 
create a course about knowledge and information because people don't need more of that. You're creating a transformation. So with your program, I'm curious, I want to dive into that. Like what specifically is the transformation for your clients? Yeah. So what I do in my program is I help artists with unrealized potential find their creative voices and master oil painting. I love it. I love it so much. (laughs) So good. Um, (laughs) So good. And so I want to touch on this because I mentioned this in the intro and you you and I were talking about it off um, the air and it's a big challenge for a lot of people. And I know it's something that you struggled with as well before you enrolled in the Authority Accelerator. A big question and a big concern that we always get is, you have to be teaching people how to make money in order to (laughs) make money online. Yep. Eh, Incorrect. Let's walk (laughs) through that. How did you feel prior to enrolling in the Authority Accelerator? What was your sort of mindset around that? I think first things first, I knew from watching your channel that you, you helped people make things happen. And I knew I wanted to work with you. And when I got on the call to see if I was a fit for the Authority Accelerator, my first question was, well, is this going to work for me? Because I mostly, like most people who want to invest in their painting careers are retirees. Um, They aren't necessarily looking to make any money from this, even if they could. And I couldn't figure out whether or not I like really had a strong value proposition there and whether this would work for me. Um, and, And so I was speaking to Grace about this from your team and she was just so great at reassuring me. And I'm so glad that I kind of let myself put that fear to rest and trusted in your team because it's, it's just been absolutely true. Um, I'm, I, I understand where I was coming from in the beginning in terms of having that apprehension. And now it just, it almost seems so ridiculous to me um, because oftentimes when I get on calls with, with painters who, who want to join, what really matters to them isn't making money. It's, mm-hmm. It's creating the pieces they know that they could make and having pieces that people are drawn to from across the room. And sure, those pieces have value. You can put a dollar sign on that, but that's not what's really motivating people. And I'm really grateful that your program helped me to see that and to really dial in my program and my sales approach around that because that's what's really, really meaningful. Yeah. And I think that the simple way to think about it, and I I think this might help some people who are tuning in right now. And let us know in the comments if you feel that way. If you feel like the only way to succeed in your online business is to teach people how to make money, put money into the comments because I think it's so common. And I wanted to share this because I think it highly relates to what you're talking about. And like I said, I've watched our clients who are in so many different spaces, teaching people how to play guitar, piano, become a better dancer in social settings fix their relationship, heal their dogs holistically, pet training, you know, all of that stuff. We've seen people, Bob the Boat Builder, it's one of my favorite things to talk about, (laughs) teaches people how to build wooden boats, you know? So, but if I think about, if you think about day-to-day, the things that you buy, how often are you buying something because you think it's going to make you money? Not often. You're often buying things for the intrinsic value and the outcome it's going to provide to you. For example, I went yesterday and I bought chamomile tea. I have chamomile tea every night. Why am I buying chamomile tea? It's not because I'm like, okay, if I get enough sleep, I'm going to make more money tomorrow. It's because for me, it represents calm, serenity, peace, which are core values of mine and how I want to show up in my life. And for your clients, when they think about investing in what you're offering with your program, They're not investing in, I need to sell more paintings and make more money. Is that going to happen? Probably. But what do you think they're really, truly investing in? Yeah, there's such a big, I always think about like Maslow's hierarchy of needs when I get on these calls, because what people are really looking for, I find over and over and over is that sense of self-actualization and Mm -hmm. feeling really proud of themselves and what they can do and knowing that they've they've really trusted in themselves and like give them, given themselves a shot. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that sense of fulfillment, I don't think there's a lot that can compete with that. Even making money. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I agree. Cause the money doesn't mean much if you're absolutely miserable. So (laughs) I totally agree. All right. Let's talk about um, the transition you went through because it's big. You worked in corporate for seven years and that is a long chunk of time. 
And this is in the back of your head. Were you were you painting through that period of time and doing art through that? I time? was, yeah. Um, and there was a lot of just. I realized in hindsight that I was kind of being my own scientist, scientist mm. of my own journey, but I didn't have the lens through which to see that. I just saw that I was trying stuff and failing <laughs> over and over. Um, but I was determined to make something work, but I had no idea where to start. So I was painting in the background. I was taking all kinds of different courses. I was learning from all kinds of different people, hoping that one of them would give me this inroad into mm. making money. Um, and thankfully, I identified where my zone of genius actually was. Um, that was about, I'd say, two years before I, I left my day job. And starting, I started to get really serious around putting together a body of work around that and mm -hmm. figuring out what my business model would be. And thankfully, I started making money from selling work and booking commissions. And then very shortly after, I, um, I had, a, had about a six-month wait list of commissions. And that was the point where I was like, okay, I, I can do this. That point was January 1st, 2020. I had no idea the year any of us were in for, and I was going on my own. Um, I have no spouse. I have a mortgage. I don't have anyone else who's going to help keep me afloat. Um, so what a time to be going full time, not just in a business, but <laughs> in your business as an artist. Yes. Um, and I joined the Authority authority Accelerator um, four months into that. I joined in April of 2020. And it couldn't have been better timing because I was, I was doing, like I was hustling and I was making things happen, just selling my paintings and selling commissions and working with people one-on-one -on -one who wanted to learn more about painting. But I could never do what I'm doing today or having the, imp or have the impact that I'm having today without being in this program, to be perfectly frank. Yeah, I mean, and that's something I find so interesting because I think there's a lot of sort of blockages around how to deliver and structure whatever your unique genius is. And oftentimes people think I have to do it in a one-on-one -on -one setting or I have to do it like that or I have to do it like this. Um, can you talk about how this has allowed you to create a deeper impact while freeing up your time? Yeah, Absolutely. You know, I was, you recommend this book, Profit First, for mm -hmm. people in the Authority Accelerator. And I was, I was <laughs> delivering a painting to a client yesterday. I had a six hour drive to deliver this piece and drive home. So I was listening to it in the car. And one of the things that the author talks about is this idea that this 80 20 principle in your business. I know that you talked about that in one of your YouTube videos that I was just watching the other day. And I realized that you've done so much of that for us in this program. Like if I were trying to do this on my own, I would have 40 different revenue streams. I would be working like a mad woman. Um, I would have no free time to do anything. And you've really identified the kind of program, the kind of business model that already answers that question. And you've, you've helped just to make it really, really clear where we're going to get the most bang for our buck, really, um, in terms of allocating our time. And because of this, I, I work half days. I mm. refuse to wake up before noon <laughs> or start my work day before noon anyway. Um, and I work until five and I have time to paint whenever I want to paint. I have time to go ride horses. I have the money to go ride horses, <laughs> which I'm really grateful for. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that honestly kind of speaks for itself, but I'm happy to answer, <laughs> answer no, any follow-up questions there. That absolutely helps. And it's really interesting. And I think it's just so serendipitous because the only way I would be able to create this program and the only way that I was is going through my own trial and error for so long and ending up in the hospital with severe burnout in 2017 and going, this just doesn't seem to be the life for me. Like, I don't think I want to do this for the rest of my life. Being an entrepreneur is not all it's cut out to be. But what I realized was I'm not going to give up on this vision I have for my life. I just have to iterate and I have to test. And as you said, and it's a motto in the Authority Accelerator is be the scientist of your own business. And um, that's what I did. And I until I landed on something that actually – worked for me when I wasn't working and created a really, really deep impact separating me from the in impact. So I didn't have to be 
present at all times in order for my clients to get results because that's a pain in the butt but for everybody. If you have to wait on me and I have to wait on you in order to be able to create the impact, that's a broken business model. Um, and so that just speaks to the whole point I was saying earlier is your most successful business idea comes from within, comes from your own story, comes from your own journey. When you see what you've created now, do you see that with your clients in that it's so much mirrors your own journey and story? Yeah. It's so funny too. When you were just describing like what you tell your clients, I realized like, oh my gosh, this is what I tell my clients all the time. Like I, I've gone on my own art journey. I have done all the things wrong. I've thrown so many things at the wall and finally I realized what sticks for me. And that's absolutely what you've done with us. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see that for my students too. I love being able to give them the shortcut. Like, trust me, I've tried all the things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, that's, that's exactly what you do for us. I'm really grateful for that. Oh, thank you. That's so nice to hear. Um, I want to share some of the highlights of your journey. So I'm actually going to take us off for a second and then I'm going to add you back in. add myself back in. Um, I want to see if we can have this pop up. Oh, we can't. It doesn't work. Never mind. That didn't work. Unfortunately, you're not able to see them. But as I mentioned earlier, a few of the highlights of Chelsea's journey thus far, you've gone from 4,000 to 40,000, now 42,000. You were literally at 40,000 last week. So you've gained 2,000 subscribers in like a couple of days, which is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> It's amazing, but 4,000 to 40,000 subscribers um, and you're generating $30,000 a month consistently in your business with your online program that's helping artists really discover their unique voice and how they want to show up with their artwork, which is so amazing. Um, I'm so curious. This is your first venture as an entrepreneur and you actually said that prior to this, when you were in corporate, you worked in like marketing and sales and all that kind of stuff, but you said you've now started from scratch. So yeah. what do you mean by that? Yeah. So I realized when, when I joined, um, I saw all, all these like really successful people who had these fantastic businesses who are in the authority accelerator to take that even further. And it just, I think stood out to me because I was like, oh, well, I've never set up a marketing funnel before, or like, I feel really apprehensive about getting on camera or, um, I, I, I don't know how to run a webinar or even like send out emails every week and not run out of ideas <laughs> um, <laughs> or make a sales pitch that feels really genuine. And like, I'm adding value and not nagging someone like those were absolutely blocks that I came in here with and places where I just really had no experience. Um, so I, you know, it's true. Like I worked in marketing for years before coming in here, but honestly, your course has taught me decades worth of marketing wisdom that I never had beforehand. Um, I, you know, my old boss wants to check in and like hop on the phone with me sometime soon. Um, we're really good friends, but we haven't had time to catch up since I've gone down my own path. And I honestly <laughs> um, can't wait to just make it clear just how much I have learned. And, and I really, I truly owe it to this program. Like, if you had told me that I was going to become an expert salesperson um, or if I could have a 60% closing rate on a $2,000 or $2,500 offering, I would have thought you were crazy. Um, Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because so I just recently made a video on this called How to Sell Without Being a D-Bag. Um, and obviously teaching selling and sales is a big part of the Authority Accelerator program. And I know I had my own stories around it. I had my own issues around it. Again, I had to fall flat on my face and fail and try all these things, test, fail, learn, go, repeat, in order to get to a place where I can translate it and teach it to you and the rest of the clients in a way that it feels good. So talk through your journey when it, <laughs> when it comes to sales. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, when I started, I was absolutely terrified. Um, and thankfully, I think I had listened to an interview you did with Jeffrey. Mm. Um, 
I think before I started this and I remember one thing he said was or maybe it wasn't an interview maybe it was just an update that he posted in the Facebook group but he was just saying follow the script like Mm -hmm. the script really works and like he would notice over time that he would drift off of it just like a couple words at a time and when he snapped it back and got it right back to where you know you set us off um in the beginning that's when his numbers went back up and so I told myself when I started like all right you are going to trust every word this woman tells you and you are going mm-hmm. to do anything she tells you to do. You are going to follow the script. Um, and yeah, it was scary at first, but it took, I mean, like selling out my pop, I think I sold out the pilot round of my course in a week. Yeah. And I had never gotten on a sales call before. Um, I was blown away. And from there, it was so easy to just build on that, that success and that confidence to say, okay, I'm going to start to tweak this. I'm just going to tweak some levers and pull some or <laughs> dials and pull some levers. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I'm going to see what really works best for me. And, you know, because we think of our businesses through the lens of a scientist, um, that's what that was. It was me running experiments. It was seeing like, how do I dial this in to work for my business and my brand and the way people expect for me to show up on sales calls and what I'm selling and I did all kinds of experiments. I saw things that really boosted my numbers. I saw things that hurt them, but it wasn't scary anymore. Like you've mm-hmm. taken that piece out of it. And I could start to like approach that with curiosity. If you told me that I would approach a sales call with curiosity a year ago, I <laughs> never could have believed you. Um, or I guess over a year ago, because uh, I sold out my, my pop over a year ago. Yeah. I mean, I think so two things on that. One is I always say curiosity leads to cash flow and relationships lead to revenue. And really at the end of the day, we are selling in everything we do. And it doesn't matter if you're having a conversation with your mom, with your partner, doesn't matter. You're constantly in a headspace of selling something, whether it's your side of the story, whether it's your opinion, whether it's something that you really want to do, you're pitching. And so it's understanding that sales is really, it's a spiritual act. I do believe that. And I think that it is the, the, the conduit to your clients achieving their goals. So really it's a huge act of generosity to sell. And I think the way you just shared that and explained that is just so, so helpful for people who are in that headspace of like, oh, mm-mm, I don't want to sell. And there's almost this, this sort of movement of fear around sales because there's been a really messed up version of entrepreneurship that's been sold to us, which is build a brand, build a brand, build a brand, build a brand, build a brand. But that's also left us with so many people who have a great brand and maybe a lot of followers and are broke and have nothing behind it. And that's a problem. So a brand is great, but a brand doesn't sustain a business. And just having a brand will lead you to burnout. And having a toolkit, which you now have to create consistency in revenue and in sales allows you to grow from a place of abundance. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like you're in a state of abundance at this point? It's so funny you say that because absolutely I do. And one thing I think I forgot to mention to you is that I think one of the really amazing things about this program is that it has let me, it has freed me up so much in terms of the paintings I make. Like Mm. I, this is so scalable that unless I'm making hundred thousand dollar paintings, which like, trust me, I'm working on it, but it's okay. I'm not in any hurry to get there because this course that I run, this program that I run is doing so much legwork that I can think of my paintings as something explorative. Um, I can make things for YouTube and just talk about what worked and what didn't. I can try things regardless of whether or not I think they will sell. And that is so freaking freeing. And if my paintings sell, fantastic. But that's just, you know, that's just the cherry on top. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's freedom of choice. That's really what freedom is when you're an entrepreneur. It's the freedom of choice of doing only the things that you want to do, which, oh my gosh, what a great way to live your life. Like that is awesome. And I love to hear that. Thank you for sharing that with me. You hadn't told me that before and that makes me so happy. Um, so let's talk about what in, in conjunction with sales. I know that pricing <laughs> can be... <laughs> A huge question mark when it comes to creating an online program. Um, And we have a rule that no client is ever going to charge less than $500 for their online program. (laughs) 
The reason that is, is because the way that you teach, we teach you to create an online course is that it's transformational. And the outcome that you're providing is so valuable that nothing less than $500 does it justice or attracts the right kind of client that's actually going to get results. And results drive your business. So for you, you're now charging $2,500. Mm -hmm. How did you land on your price? How did you come to terms with pricing your program? <laughs> okay, well, first, I don't think I could have done it without that rule. Like when I was first watching the Authority Accelerator videos and you you told us that, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to have to, <laughs> like, all right, I can't justify anything, any preconceived notions I came in here with, and I'm going to yeah. have to go off of exactly what she tells me to do. Yeah. And, um, and I knew it wasn't going to be 500. Um, I forget exactly how I got there, but I, I imagine it has to do with the, the research you had us do to set that up. And mm -hmm. I remember going in and asking, do you think this is reasonable? Because just about every YouTuber that is an artist or every artist who isn't a YouTuber, they all have 100 to $300 online courses. Um, or $15 video downloads, I cannot tell you the number of artists who are just so immensely talented and do $15 <laughs> content offerings. And I just thought, well, they are so great. How am I going to compete with that? And exactly what you outlined for us, it really made it clear, like how I could feel really good about what I was offering. And the fact that there's always going to be people who are undercutting you always. Um, and the fact that the way we show up on YouTube means that people are really going to seek you out for your personality. I see that over and over and over on sales calls. Um, I am probably the youngest person many of my clients have ever learned from. Um, and they don't care because they, they love the personality that I share with people in my videos. And they love the combination of experiences I bring to teaching. And I never would have thought to do that. Um, Really, I, I would have just called myself an online art instructor and I would have tried to figure out what I should price on, um, how I should price my work based on like how good I thought my work was compared to everyone else who, I would have been selling videos for a dollar. Right. <laughs> I really would right. have. Yeah, there'd be no way I could build a business around that. And, you know, I, I'm really grateful that I just showed up one day in the Facebook group and said, I this is what I'm planning on doing for my pop. I can't imagine doubling that when I go into the evergreen version, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Do you think this is reasonable? And when you said, yes, I'm just really glad I ran with that because it was scary. It was scary going to that double your price transition. Um, and it just went so well. People did yeah. that and I, and I found that over and over when I've had to adjust prices, um, people just get more excited. Yeah. And I think I want to ask you as well, like when you think about the people you've attracted, there's a huge difference um, in the results people get and also the type of client that you're going to get when you're charging $15 versus charging $2,500. How do you feel about your clients that you've attracted? I absolutely love my clients. And you're absolutely right. Any Anytime I have somebody that I'm just like, oh man, I'm having to sell extra hard or I'm having to like really prove that this is worth the money. I'm now at the point where I have no qualms about simply saying, this is what I do. I'd love to have you if you want to join. They don't. Um, yeah. And I can move on without, yes. you know, without second guessing that or like, I am so glad that I move on from those clients because everyone I work with is just so invested and great members of the community. They support one another and, you know, putting a discount on my program to bring in a few extra people, never worth it. Never worth it. Never worth it. And uh, we call it on our team, we call it pull versus push energy. Um, when you feel like you have to push and prove yourself, the person's probably not the right fit. And having your business run in a way where it is creating abundance for you and that security and peace of mind, you don't have to you know, worry about every single client being 100% yes. And if they're not 100% yes, again, you probably don't want them in the program. So 
I always say like subtraction and saying no leads you to even more success and you're proof of that as well. And how freeing is that to not have to be like, oh, I got to work with everybody. You know what I mean? Um, And so getting that freedom of choice in that way too is it's so vital and it's so important. And I think so many people give their power away when they undercharge because they're scrambling to get just anybody in the door, which is a really crappy way to grow a business and an unaligned way to grow a business. Um, I'm sure you're, I'm going to be able to guess this, but what do you think has been your biggest mindset shift since you enrolled in the Authority Accelerator? Oh my, oh my gosh, Sunny, that's a hard question. It's really hard. Do you to want me to say my guess? Sure. My guess? Yeah. I think it's that you became the scientist. Yeah, I think, I think it's that. And then I was also thinking about the transformation piece. I think that's, that's taken time for me to really internalize and understand the value of it. Um, but it's really like, I'm so proud of how I've learned to grow in terms of how I show up for my students and how I show up on sales calls. Um, that's been really powerful, but you're right. I think, I think that that mindset shift to thinking as a scientist about my business, it has been so incredibly freeing. Um, I, oh my gosh, I don't know if I should just say this on, on (laughs) Facebook live, but like, I love bougie things. I love spending money. Like I, um, (laughs) and as a result, like I can absolutely stress myself out with my revenue goals and what I need my business to do. And I cannot believe that, you know, this month I, I wanted to invest in this like beautiful painting. Um, I shared it in the authority accelerator group. Um, I think last month or month before, um, and that was a, big stinking deal. Like I've never bought anything for this much money except my car. Um, and I knew I wanted to save up for that. I knew I wanted to be able to pay for that. And all it took was knowing my numbers because Mm. I'm thinking about this as a scientist. I know how many sales calls I have to get on given my closing rate to hit a revenue goal where I'm going to cover that expense and more, and I can feel really good about it. I am so like, I'm not even grateful for it for that reason. I I am so grateful because I think honestly the way I think about money and making money has absolutely transformed. Mm-hmm. You know, I said at the beginning of our our call here, our interview, um, that I don't have like creative entrepreneurs in my family, um, but I do have an entrepreneur in my family, and and I grew up around her being stressed out about money all the time. And I think it made it really, really scary. The idea of running my own business, I think that was honestly one of the biggest blocks I had to becoming a fine artist because I just, I I saw over and over again, I saw it in my family. I saw it with other artists, this idea of like, well, to run your own business or to be a full-time artist is deciding between buying paint or buying groceries and being mm-hmm. stressed about money all the time. And the fact that you've given me the tools to know exactly what generates revenue and what I have to do to make that happen and trust that it's going to happen is, I mean, it's life-changing to be honest. I'm so happy for you. And I, I know I know the behind the scenes, obviously. Um, and we've had a few questions come in. Actually, a few people said um, – uh, you know, what's the journey? Like how long has the journey taken you? So you joined in July of 2020 um, and, or no, sorry, you launched in July of 2020, correct? Yeah. Launched yeah. your first version of your online course. And mm-hmm. in the last year, what has that journey looked like for you to scale and where you're yeah, at now? Absolutely. Okay. So I joined in April. I told myself in my 90 day letter, I was not going to do a single thing out of order because I'm that girl. I'm the girl who will go crazy from the very beginning and then burn herself out. So I told myself I couldn't work ahead in the program. I had to check off every single thing. And I think that meant that I was maybe a little slower than I needed to be. Um, but I, let's see, I started selling my pop in July. I sold that out within 10 days, launched my pop in August. Um, I believe we wrapped um, probably late October or something like that. And honestly, I just let it run evergreen while I tried to figure out building the evergreen funnel and putting all the marketing things in place. Um, Oh, that was probably about six months that I just, I just kind of let it run on its own while I figured out my stuff. Yeah. And the thing that really lit a fire under me was 
ah, this is just proof that the Sony system works, you all. Um, I had a larger YouTube channel shout me out because they saw the quality of content I was making, thanks to what you lay out on YouTube for bosses. And it it took like, it, it brought about a thousand people over to my channel. And the algorithm saw that and they saw how engaged how engaged those people were and everything just started blowing up mm-hmm. and it was like probably a two-day turnaround where I was like I need to get this evergreen funnel up I need to start stop making excuses stop being okay with just the amount of revenue that's bringing in um and I think it took me about a week in July to finally get my my button gear and get the funnel set up get all the back end things worked out make it so that this thing was just operating at peak efficiency and getting people in and really channeling all that interest. And I think within that first week I was booked out for a month with sales calls. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And now you're at, so you did 30,000 last month. Is that right? Yes, I did. Um, 30,000 in revenue. Um, This month I'm looking to do 30,000 cash. Yeah. And you're (laughs) almost there. You're, yeah. you're over the half yeah, I'm on mark, track. Which is amazing. She's on track. That's the thing. The pr- part of this program is like giving you the power to know exactly how to achieve your revenue goals consistently. And that is such a huge factor to that peace of mind as an entrepreneur. Um, some people are asking, what is this program? The Authority Accelerator is, we call it a business in a box. I don't know if there's a better way to explain it. Um, but we, I created something called the Rocket Method, and it takes you from start to finish in creating, automating, and scaling an online course business. Um, and another person asked the difference between YouTube for bosses and um, and the Authority Accelerator. And YouTube for Bosses for me is really just you're growing your YouTube channel. Whereas Authority Accelerator is you're actually monetizing your expertise and you're creating an entire business and becoming the CEO of your business um, that is truly scalable and can completely run without you. How would you, you've done both. So how would you describe the difference between both programs? Um, yeah, to give like a, a little quick backstory, I joined YouTube for Bosses, um, I'd say, fall of 2019. So about three months before I took my business full time and about six months before I joined the authority accelerator. So I say that I did everything in order, but technically I did the content from YouTube for bosses before I joined authority accelerator. And honestly, that is why that content went viral. That is Mm. why my YouTube channel blew up because I did not touch my YouTube channel for a year actually over a year, I think it was probably uh, 18 months. (laughs) My YouTube channel was just sitting there and that's all it took for it to blow up was following YouTube for bosses. But if I had not translated that into the authority accelerator, that would have been like, okay, cool. You have 40,000 YouTube subscribers. Now what? The authority accelerator was what actually turned that into revenue and made that into a business. Yeah. Because now you have an online program that you can sell and monetize through your YouTube channel, which is really important to understand. Um, So great explanation. Sometimes you explain it better than I do. So that's perfect. Um, I wanted to ask you about your lifestyle because I know Mm -hmm. that at your corporate job, you did experience burnout. Um, And I mentioned earlier, you went on vacation and still hit $20,000 in cash collected, which is awesome. So... um, How has your lifestyle changed and how do you feel about your lifestyle at this point as an entrepreneur? So one of the things that, one of the reasons I really wanted to be an artist full time was because I wanted a certain kind of lifestyle. I was absolutely burnt out from the corporate culture, from being asked to do things that weren't in my zone of genius. Um, And there were just like a lot of day-to-day friction points and stressors that came with that. And as a result, I knew that when I went on this journey, it wasn't just about painting for a living. It was about having freedom, Mm -hmm. freedom to work when I wanted, where I wanted to be able to travel and paint um, and to make enough money that like I could have a really awesome life. I was really done buying into the idea that I could either pursue my creative calling or make a healthy living and be able to have fun and have meaningful experiences and and pay to have those meaningful experiences because oftentimes those come with a price tag. Um, And that is exactly what this has enabled me to do. I think honestly, more, more than I possibly could have imagined. My goal for launching my business was first, it was like, I want to, I want to earn more money than my corporate job. Um, 
spoiler alert, I am on track to earn more this month than I earned in my entire first year in my corporate job. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, and then my second goal was like, okay, I want to, I think I'd just be happy if I made like six figures. You all, when you join this program, you will, you will see the results that people get time and time again. Like we, we can dream a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I love to hear it. Thank you. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. You, the, your expectations can only really be what you have seen as your reality thus far. And so when this happens, it's like your mind has to catch up to your new reality, um, which is incredible because this is your new normal. Your new normal is I make $30,000 a month and that's going to soon turn into 40 and then it'll be 50 and then it'll be $100,000 a month. Um, I know that's going to happen and I can't wait to talk to you again when that happens. And I'm so grateful to be on the journey with you. Um, We are going to do some Q&A in just a second. I have one more question for you, um, but I also wanted to tackle um, some people are saying, oh, does that mean I should do YouTube for bosses before a 30 accelerator? No. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I yeah, just happened I, to do it. <laughs> yeah. So Chelsea happened to do it that way. But the reason that we say absolutely not is that it's really important when you're building a YouTube channel that you know exactly who you're targeting and ultimately what you want to monetize your channel around. And if you just start your channel and you don't know those two things, it's very confusing for the algorithm and it's not going to serve you long-term. So it worked out in Chelsea's um, situation, but ultimately, like she said, she's like, if I had just done YouTube for bosses, I'd have 40,000 subscribers, but I wouldn't know what to do with them and I wouldn't know how to monetize my channel. Um, And I definitely wouldn't be making $30,000 a month with my online program. The Authority Accelerator teaches you how to build a business and become the CEO of that business. They're very different. And so I am a big proponent just go into the authority accelerator because YouTube doesn't even get touched until phase three of the program. And we have plenty of clients who are doing, you know, pretty big numbers on a monthly basis without even touching YouTube. Um, Coraline is another client that I talked to not that long ago, and she's doing about $30,000 a month, hasn't even touched her YouTube channel. So we have all different organic marketing methods that we teach inside the authority accelerator so that you're fully equipped as an entrepreneur to know how to find your clients and to know how to get your clients to find you so that you can create as Chelsea's done consistency in your business. Um, My question for you is, there are people here, obviously, who are thinking, wow, this sounds really good. You know, I want to create an online course. What would your advice be to them? (laughs) Um, You should join this program. Like, you just, you should. I know that's why I'm here. I know that you are like, well, of course she's going to say that. I could never have done this without this program. And it's not just about coaching. Like this has changed my business. And I think, you know, Sunny, what you were just saying about um, shifting your expectations, those have grown (laughs) an order of magnitude because I'm in this program and because I see the results people get. If I had just been hanging out with other artists, I think I would have been like, yeah, I feel like the ceiling's like probably like $100,000 a year. And that would sound really nice. Girl, that is nothing. (laughs) And I see the results people get day in and day out to prove it. And it really motivates. It's not just motivational. It's okay. Well, if they're doing that, I I think I can do that too. It normalizes it. Yeah, it really does. That is the magic of our community and of the community and the squad you have around you when you're in the Authority Accelerator. Your new normal is $2 million a year. Easy. Okay. I'm excited for that. No no biggie. You know, and it becomes, that quote is so true. You're the the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Jelani and I were talking about this last month when we spoke and you're surrounded by people who are achieving things that are so far out of your realm of possibility that it makes you believe it. And you go, well, if they're doing it, why can't I do it? I'm surrounded by people who are doing the thing. So I'm going to do the thing. And now you've become that for so many people inside the program as well, which is just so beautiful. Like people are looking at you and being like, holy smokes, look at what Chelsea's doing. Okay, this is motivating me. I know we have people here today who are like, if she's doing it, I'm doing it. Um, So yeah, it's just, it really is normalizing your dreams and knowing that it is so beyond possible. And that was a big factor for me too. I needed to surround myself with people who were dreaming bigger and doing bigger, not just dreaming, not being a entrepreneur, but actually doing it and having the right process in place to do it. Um, There's a few questions I wanted to answer. What if you don't have a niche? We actually teach you how to find your niche. I mean, for you, 
you came in and kind of had an idea of your niche, but a lot of people come in with no idea of their niche, no followers, no social media audience, and still see a lot of success in creating their business. For you, did you feel like the niching process that we went through in the program was helpful for you? Oh my gosh, it was so valuable. So for the person who was asking about joining YouTube for bosses first, you're right. The only reason that worked, the only reason that didn't bite me in the butt was because I knew I was going to paint no matter what. That being said, I just, I can't even find the words to describe how valuable the niching process that you lay out is because I, I would have thought that I was just an oil painter. Mm. Just an oil painter. Um, now I really understand the intersection of all of the things that I'm really great at that really set me apart. That means that no one can compete with me. Mm -hmm. There are painters who can paint better. There are painters who can be so much more articulate. There's so many areas where people really excel and I don't have to be better than them at all things because I can show up as myself and the, and the unique constellation of things that I'm really great at that no one's going to be able to compete with. And I never would have arrived at that without the process that you lay out. Yeah. So the whole first part of the authority accelerator is, is honing in on your uncopyable niche, which as you just said, makes you someone that nobody can compete with. And, um, it's a really beautiful process and journey and I, it really shows through in everything you're doing. And I'm so excited for you. Um, do we need an online program before joining authority accelerator? No, we show you how to do it from scratch. Like we did with Chelsea. Um, And then I'm just going to run through these real quick. Um, Chelsea, were you working while launching your business and for how long before you left your corporate work? You weren't, right? Um, There was about a solid year of like working on building up the client base and establishing that I would have work going into leaving my day job. Um, So that was a really important piece for me. But I think that's going to look different for everybody. Like I said in the beginning, I, you know, I didn't have like a partner who was providing a safety net. I... Um, I have a lot of artist friends who live with their parents. I was not doing that. I have a mortgage. I have bills to pay. Um, And so it was really important for me to take that time to know that I was going to have the business. I think that if you're in a day job now, I think this program would be fantastic because you get that consistency. Um, You might be working your butt off while you still have a day job to be in this program, but you're going to get results even faster than I did if that's how you go about it, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. I I couldn't agree more. Um, We have a question about time, which is a funny question that always comes up when I was interviewing Jeffrey, who Jeffrey CT1 has gone from no audience, no course, no business 18 months ago to now he's doing $150,000 a month consistently, no ad spend, um, and he's crossed the million dollar mark. Um, And someone asked this when he was on and he said, that's what we call a TBU question, true but useless. Um, Because... (laughs) And I know you know that's true. Um, And it's not to offend anyone. It's just that it takes the amount of time it takes for you. We say on average, it's going to be like five hours a week. But it depends on how fast you want to move. You know, for you, you were like, I'm not in a huge rush to get the evergreen piece of this business off the ground. I did the pop. It worked for me. And then you had a fire to get it rolling. But like we lay out timelines for exactly how long it should take. From the moment you enter to getting your course off the ground, getting cash flow, client results, and clients in the door is a month and a half. Everything should be done within 90 days, but everybody takes their own time, and that's why we have lifetime access. For you, if you were to answer that question, how long does it take or how much time weekly did you spend on it, what was it for you? Gosh. Okay. Answering the weekly question is tough, so I'm going to focus on the first two parts of this. Yes, it was within 90 days for me to oversell my pop and make that $11,000. And that was 10 days worth of actually really fun work of getting on calls with people and seeing if they were a fit. Um, So yes, if you, and I made back my investment in the program, you know, it was like two calls or something, or whatever it was, it, it happened so quickly. So do not be afraid of of that. You are going to make back that investment within 90 days if you are truly doing this work. I see that over and over from the other really great people in this program. Um, And it's so something I wanted to add to the question earlier about my timeline. Sunny's absolutely right. Like I kind of just like sat around and like (laughs) I needed a fire to get lit under me to wrap up this process. And I'm still in the program, you all. I'm like still working through YouTube for bosses right now. So I'm getting these results like uh, still like 
this is a work in progress. And I know it's only going to get bigger and better. So honestly, I think that if I had that fire lit under me sooner, it probably would have been six months to get where I am now, yeah. probably. And yeah. that's giving myself a lot of time to like. That's a lot of leeway. Yeah. 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 Um, it, but it's totally dependent on the individual, your circumstances, et cetera. But again, that's why we offer lifetime access. Cause I'm like, I don't care how fast or slow you go. You're here. We've got you, you've got the support, everything you yeah. need. Um, someone asked Kim, Kim Ford asked, what was your first price point before the 2,500? What was your first price point of your program? Yeah. My pop launched at 997 for the fast action, or I think it was 997. Then maybe it was 897 fast action. Yeah. Um, so even though you you set the bar at five hundred dollars, um, that was the thing that was scary. It was like I could have just been like, okay, well I'll make this a five hundred dollar course. No, like right from the get go, you lit a fire under me, and I was like, all, all right, I'll do double the minimum. But she says we need to start with, and it's terrifying, and it worked. And it worked. Trust me, like I'm an artist. I know how hard selling is. Like. If anyone has a hard time selling, it's an artist who has <laughs> paintings for sale. The idea of pitching a 997 or 897 fast action um, product was terrifying. And now it's it's every day. I had a yeah. sales call right before I hopped on with Sunny um, that I closed. I have a sales call right after this one. So I love it. <laughs> and it's just, trust. Yeah, I mean, you've had a very day. good week. So. <laughs> Very good um, we have a few more quick questions. Um, Tanya Wilson asks, what is the success ratio for people who go through the course? I always say for everybody who does the work, and as Chelsea said, she did it to a T, did not skip a step, did everything that we lay out because we lay it out step by step. It's 100%, but you got to do the work. It's not a magic pill. So um, uh, Lena, will AA help me create in-stream ads that convert? Um, I may be on another track. Why are you running ads? I think that's the biggest question. You don't need ads. Chelsea doesn't run ads. Um, they're not necessary. And we don't really think they're necessary until you're at like $100,000 per month. But of course, if you want to start them sooner, you can. But they're not necessary. And ads don't convert when your messaging is not right. That's why the first thing we go through is your messaging and making sure that it's going to work on everything you do. Copy emails, et cetera. Um, Michelle Gilbreth said, I've been in the Authority Accelerator just three weeks and already made at least 9K in sales in just applying the techniques and scripts. Yes, you did. Um, and if you want to share your niche, Michelle, go right ahead. Um, Afki asked, I would like to know how she got her 50 ICA. She's a fellow artist in the Authority Accelerator. So if you have any tips for her, I'd yeah, love to hear it. Absolutely. Um, I went in Facebook groups. I went in Facebook groups. I shared paintings that I knew people would like. And I said, I'm putting together a course. I would love to hear from you. Um, and if you join the Authority Accelerator and you ask me in the group what those scripts were, I'd be happy to copy and to paste those them. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, on average, how many people are on the Q&A calls to get the necessary support? We have about 10 questions per call and we've never had a, a call where I haven't been able to and Nicole hasn't been able to tackle every single question and speak to you as Chelsea and I are speaking right now. That's why I know my clients so well and everyone kind of makes fun of me because I'm a little bit of a stalker. Um, <laughs> I know my clients very well. Hi, Emily. Um, I hope that helps, Afki. Um, and then uh, Michelle is in the nutrition and macro space, and she's made $9,000 in three weeks of being in the program. Um, all right, I'm going to drop the link. I want to thank you so much for your time, Chelsea. We've gone quite long, but it, it was value-packed, and I know it helped a lot of people and inspired a lot of people. If you want to join Chelsea and I inside the Authority Accelerator, go to sunnylearnerduzy.com slash apply. We'll be excited to welcome you in. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to say before we wrap up? Look at this freaking angel angel light you've got going on. What is happening? It's kind of perfect. It's like the, <laughs> the perfect note to end on. I mean, honestly, I think I said it before. Like, guys, I, I know. I know that you're like, well, she's, of course she's on here doing an interview about how well she's done. I am like dime a dozen in this group. And I like truly and I think the only thing that set me apart at, at all, if even that was that I just said, like, I'm going to do everything she tells me to do. It works. I am not unique. <laughs> I might make work that's unique, but like my ability to go through and learn this sales process and learn how to build a business and become an entrepreneur. Like I was starting from scratch. If I can do it, like you really can, if you're, if you're going to put in the work, it's going to happen. Um, and I just can't really say enough about how much this program has done for me. So if you are even curious, you should get on the call and find out more. 
We really should. I agree. I echo that sentiment. Thank you, Chelsea. You're the freaking best. Your artwork is incredible. I wish I could have shared your channel, but it wasn't working. But your YouTube channel is just Chelsea Lang, right? Yes, that's right. Yes. Go check it out. It is so cool. It's the coolest thing ever. And I have no doubt you're going to be at 100,000 subscribers in like five days. Um, <laughs> I really wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Be sure to give this a like, share it with somebody who needs to hear it um, so we can reach more people with Chelsea's incredible story. And we hope to see you on the inside. SunnyLenarizzi.com slash apply. The link is on the screen and I've dropped it in the chat as well. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day or evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. Lots of love. Thanks, Chelsea. Thank you, Sunny.